so no Carlos Correa to play third base for the Mets this season. But, you know, this offseason, Manny Machado, he can opt out of his Padres contract. What about a reunion, Machado and Buck? Could that be in play next offseason, Andy? Yes, absolutely. This is a much better fit than, than Correa uh, because of the fact that Machado's going to be 31 going into not this coming season, but the season after that. You're not going to have to give him 12 years or something at that point. You can probably get away with half of that. And he does have that relationship with Buck. Zach Britton, who I got to know well when he was a Yankee, uh, told me a story where he said when he was playing, uh, when they were all three of them were in the Orioles and, and, and Machado was playing for Buck, Britain thought they hated each other. They were going at it all the time. They really didn't seem like they had a good relationship. And then Machado leaves and he says, Buck's the best manager he's ever had. He would love to play for him again sometime. And they had that tough love thing and a bond that was really forged in a lot of struggle when Machado was younger. So I think that's a perfect fit. Obviously, the Mets have the resources to spend on third base. Uh, they showed that over the past couple weeks. So yeah, this, this thing really makes a lot of sense. Well, right now, Machado signed through 2028, all right? and he's making $30 million each year. Um, so the Mets are going to have to pony up more than that, either in terms of years or in terms of average annual value. And then you get into that circumstance that you were talking about earlier. Uh, Machado's a year older than Lindor, and you've got the chance of your left side of the infield aging together. On the other hand, Manny has played 150 or more games each of the last seven full seasons, which is an incredible accomplishment in today's game, maintains – a high level of performance. I mean, he carried that Padres team on his own last year once Tatis got hurt for a large chunk of the season. He's an elite defender. He's a great player. Um, I think you just need to worry about the age of this team. They keep getting older and older, and I think at some point that has to end. Now, you know, is Machado an elite enough player to make him worthwhile? I think that you need to wait and see first how Brett Beatty performs this year, whether he um, fits in at the major league level the way you want him to, whether that's at the start of the season or somewhere in the middle of the season. And I think then you assess whether a Machado is the kind of player who can put you over the top. Well, I don't think there's any question Manny Machado is going to opt out because that's the new style. Everybody's going to opt out. But we do have an entire season to determine whether he is he can, can he continue playing at, at the level he's playing at right now. And, it, and then it comes down to, you know, what's he going to want? Is Brett Beatty really going to be, is he really ready? Is he ready to be the long-term third baseman? I think those things will all be decided by the end of this coming season, but there's no question. If you can get a guy like Manny Machado who plays the game the way it is, I mean, he, he took over when he went to San Diego in Tatis. He and Tatis had it out because Manny said, hey, there's a way to play this game right. Those are the kind of players you want. Those are the kind of players you win with. So I think if he's going to be available next year, I don't think there's any question the Mets are going to take a run at him. Yeah, Terry, and to that point, if you talk to Buck about Machado, that's one of the things he points to, how he evolved from a very young, raw kid when he first had him in Baltimore to a true leader, and that's what we've seen with that Padres team, and that's the type of clubhouse that the Mets are compiling right now, those types of players. We'll see. That story is for another day, though.